What's up enthusiasts, it's your boy Rob back with another video. Guys, I want to thank you for joining me once again for this lovely day. This is actually night right now for me, but guys, welcome to Reaction Wednesday. Just like I said in my previous video, guys, I'm sticking to the schedule and I'm delivering as promised. So guys, I found the video uh, that I think will be really good for us to kind of jump into and watch. This one's from Discourse Miniatures. She's uh I'm going to start a few minutes in because I don't feel like we really need to watch the intro of her video. But basically what she's talking about is there being more to the hobby and more games to the hobby than just Warhammer 40K. Can you believe it? I mean, it blew my mind. No. So jokes aside, yeah, if you are new to the hobby, I'm pretty sure you know what Warhammer is and that's kind of all you may know. But there is so much more in this atmosphere of hobbying that you can really just jump into. So, guys, I need you to expand your horizon and look for all of the indie games and the smaller publishers and stuff like that and uh, give them a try because you never know what you'll run across. But without further ado, let's get into this video. Let's get started. This is Let's Relic Blade. You'll notice that it is already open. Relic Blade. Yeah, I actually didn't have this shipped over. I brought this with So guys, Relic Blade, I messaged uh Sean Sutter. I remember yeah, that's his name, Sean Sutter. Um a, like a few times he was giving me some um some uh suggestions on where to get cards printed from. So that was really cool. Very nice of him to do that. Really never had a conversation beyond that point with him, but uh very nice to uh to actually extend that uh, suggestion to me. So, Sean Sutter, Relic Blade, what's up? Holla at your boy. With me and my hand luggage. This is a super fun, really fast, and furious skirmish war game set in a kind of fantasy D&D-esque world. It's a beautiful little bridge from D&D over into the wargaming hobby proper. I, I love the, the, the how the cards are implemented into the game as well. Um, they're all stat cards. If you guys played Relic Blade or at least seen the Relic Blade, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but Sean Sutter is an illustrator, sculptor, game designer. He's a jack of all trades. Um, so very talented. I mean, anyone that can do that is is a freaking ace in my book. Um, not only that, I love the aesthetic of his miniatures. But let me let's see if she actually touches on that. I got this from Exit Twenty Three. They very kindly let me have a review copy, and that's what I've been doing. I've been playing the hell out of it. I've been having a lot of fun with it, and uh, yeah, I'm hoping to do a review for my patrons. These are actually some of the funnest miniatures I've painted in a really long time. I did a sort of Borderlands style on them, so you can see that they have yeah. a very. I love because they have that like I don't know if he sculpts these by hand or uh, digitally or whatever, but they have that look as if they were sculpted by hand. Um, that very like animated, cartoonish look. Um, not like you know goofy cartoonish, but you know just like again that animated look, and I really enjoy that because again it reminds me of the stuff that I prefer. Um, and if he is sculpting this uh, with a 3D modeling, at least, you know, it's really cool for him to take that approach because a lot of 3D models I'm seeing, a lot of sculpts I see nowadays are are going for like a hyper realistic look. And I don't know if that's because like the base models and stuff that they use are just like that, you know, because a lot of stuff's probably coming from gaming or whatever the case may be. But um, long story short, I love what he is doing with his models and his sculpting. The animated aesthetic and I want <laughs> She's talking to do about that right now. That. Super quick and easy to paint as well. And when it comes okay. to Relic Blade, I cannot not talk about this guy. Who's that this guy? Is Captain Crab. Seriously, this guy is <laughs> okay. awesome. I love this miniature so much. He's got two He's got this freaky like bug eyed face. This like uh I'd be seeing, I would see him across from the table and it would just be bothering me the whole time. So, no, I don't like that model. Not like I don't like the model, but no, no. Just no. The Hormius is in his crabby little He looks hands, freaky. Maybe it's the paint job that made him look so freaky. Him sideways when I move him. I can't wait to paint this miniature. Uh, it's going to look fantastic, I think. Loads and loads of vibrant colors. So, when she dropped the model out of the package, it made me think about um, the material. And what do you guys prefer painting? I'm a guy that's partial to plastic so you know do you like metal um or are you a plastic person and i don't know what i guess games workshop uses like their hard plastic i kind of like my plastic to be a little bendy and that's more so because 
I don't ever want to feel like I hate my models feeling like they're fragile and you know, if I drop them, they're going to just shatter. So I, I don't mind a little bit of bending, bendiness in my model. I love the lurkers from the deep set because you can get to paint them in very, very exciting aquatic based colors that you just don't get to paint very often. It's a yep. really interesting painting challenge. That's a good point. That is a very good point. You know, especially like if you play like a lot of fantasy games, you're going to be using the hell out of browns and greens um some oranges and stuff like that very like earthy tones and stuff like that but you know you really don't get to dabble in those like really like pastel like bright fluorescent colors and i guess with a range like this especially with um this particular group of models you can just go all out and just do whatever you want to do so i love that that is a ton of fun which is why i got them too yeah, so I might have got the starter set as a review copy, but I did buy this for myself. Look, you can't present me with a Shark Knight and not expect me to. Time out. I don't. I haven't noticed this up until this point, but what's up with the gloves, guys? If you uh, are subscribed to Discourse Miniatures, comment about the gloves, or maybe I should jump over to her comment section and uh, and ask about these gloves. I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. To so each his own. I'm not judging. I'm just asking. Just buy that, cool. okay? The Apostles of the Deep faction. Because it's kind of like those are your models now. Why are you, why are you still wearing gloves for your models? I don't know. Expansion set totally spoke Sweet. to me. They were super easy to paint. I will say they are very expensive. It's very boutique style of game. I just had to have the Crab Knight for reasons that are personal. Okay, so gaslands i need to talk to you about gaslands gaslands okay. this is a game yeah. published Second by edition. osprey games created by mike hutchinson i am a big fan of his podcast uh, one didn't know he had a podcast i'll have to look for that two i've played the first edition of um of gaslands and i remember when it came out i got it i, I got it within a month or so of it coming out i just remember me like just going to every gas station or not gas station, every grocery store and like Walmart and just scouring the aisles for Hot Wheels cars because Hot Wheels are so cheap. They're like a dollar, you know, so that's like it's like the perfect game to get into to where you won't you know, you can feel like, hey, I can kind of get anything under the sun and it'll be good quality because I mean, it's a dollar and they're all sculpted very well. Um, so yeah, but I remember going out, grabbing as many Hot Wheels cars as I could, probably not using like 90% of them, but just wanting to have them. And it kind of, it was nice to pick up a few cars that I actually just like the look of. So I got like a Porsche, um, and I got like an old, like Camaro or something like that. But, uh, that was, that was very nice too. Rules of Carnage. I think it's really, really cool. Uh, I've never played Gaslands. This is very famous. You use Matchbox cars to play this game, mm -hmm. which is kind of wild. Very different. I actually bought this at the Cerise Precision stand from Div, who was absolutely lovely and gave me a secret YouTuber discount. So thank you for that. Whoa, hold up. Hold up. Guys, where's my, where's my YouTuber discount? I need to get YouTuber discounts. All right. So... Help me help you help me help you by subscribing and liking and telling your friends to subscribe. So at some point, someone could take notice of this channel and be like, hey, listen, Rob, we want to push you some uh, some discounts to push on to your people. So, yeah, look out for your boy, Rob. We can do this as a community. Oh, damn. I shouldn't have said it was secret. No, you shouldn't should have. have said it was for YouTubers. Oh, it's too hot today. I look mm. forward to trying this out. I might be talking about it in a let's, future video. Let's make this, this happen. This sexy little number is called Xenos Rampant. Uh, <laughs> hello there, comment section. I finally answered your please. This is another game published by Osprey Games. Really interesting. It uses the Lion's Rampant rules to create a... So I've got... Oh, I've got Lion Rampant. I think I've got Lion Rampant. I believe... It, no. I think I've got Dragon Rampant. I think I've got Dragon Rampant. I've got one of the Rampants. But, um... Uh, never really played it much. Uh, kind of read through the rule book, got the army out. I got um, of some models that I've actually never even painted. Um, actually, did, I was going to do it in 20 mil. That's what it was. I was going to do this in 20 mil. Had the book. Um, obviously, an older version of this. 
and just really never got the game going. So a sort of sci-fi game. I think it is a skirmish miniatures agnostic game, but I haven't really had a chance to look into it too much just yet. But a lot of people seem to be really hyped on it. So I really want to check it out, play a few games and see if it's any good. Oh my god, this box. Oh my god. There's so much stuff in here. There I is so up much these stuff from in that box. Precision as well. These are used in Gaslands. Okay, here's a big one. What is that? You weren't there, man. Yes, that's right. It's the US Army for the Vietnam War. Now, Vietnam miniatures are really interesting. They're not something that traditionally has really excited me, although I. It, uh, only because of 3D printing. Are we seeing a lot of Vietnam era like soldiers? I, I swear before that they were extremely hard to find. I'm not saying they weren't out there. You guys probably know of dozens of um, sculptors and manufacturers that were doing Vietnam era stuff. Not me. I think I can only think of one off the top of my head and that was in 20 mil and this is still more recent. Um, this was something I was doing with Battle Space and someone else wrote a um, fan made like expansion type thing. Um, just fan made content for Battle Space. Guys, check it out. So if you're into the Vietnam era war stuff, go get a copy of Battle Space and then go to the Facebook group, the Battle Space community group. And there is in the download section that someone has kind of thrown some rules together for Vietnam era. Can't think of the gentleman's name off the top of my head. I'm so sorry, but um, he's posted pictures of it, of it and everything like that. So it'd be something for you guys to check out if you are into Vietnam. I'm very much interested in the history of the Vietnam War, but no game has really caught my attention until now. Rubicon models are coming out with their very first miniature war game rule set, which is really exciting. Okay. Rubicon miniatures create a ton of historical miniatures and people use them for a lot of games like bolt action. So I'm really excited to see the miniature war game that they have coming out. It's called Oscar Mike and I did play it and it is very interesting. It has a ton of very bespoke mechanics, probably one of the most interesting games I actually saw at UKGE. I'm really looking forward to this one and getting some games in with it because not only are the miniatures... When someone says something's interesting, does that mean they like it or they're kind of... Uh, the jewelry, the jury's out on it. The jewelry. <laughs> the jury is out on it because usually if someone says they like it, it's like, oh man, I, I freaking love that game. I was playing it and I, just, I loved it and it was excellent and this is what I liked about it. But, you know, when people just say it was, it was interesting, it was... It, it was interesting. I mean, I kind of, you know, it's kind of, it makes you wonder. It's like, well, wait, wait a minute. Maybe that's a genuine interesting note. Maybe. It's really, really pretty and really, really affordable. But also it's super furious. Whenever you start combat, everyone shoots at one another all at once. It's a very interesting mix of you go, I go, as well as alternating activations. And that is Margrave. I'm really looking forward to Margrave. Surprisingly, I'm not the biggest fan of rank and flank games. And Margrave is a rank and flank game. This is being done by George over at 3C. Me. Me. I don't know what it is about me, guys. I'll try to make this quick so this video does just not take forever. But I am not a fan of the rank and file games. I just, I've got a buddy. We were talking about what we wanted to do. The same guy that we were talking about doing uh, 10th edition. And, and he's actually in the magic video. Same gentleman. And he wants to do rank and file because he wants to have like, just massive amounts of miniatures on the table and i guess that's just the easiest way to move lots of miniatures around got it i understand but there's something that's unique about that tactical element of moving each individual figure and putting them in certain spots and trying to get gain cover i just love it i love it i mean i can't help it it's almost like i don't even want to try one of these kind of games steel studios he has a fellow youtuber actually and he's making his Damn, everybody's a YouTuber now. Everyone. His own game now. And it looks really interesting. It looks like he's learned a lot of lessons from games like A Song of Ice and Fire and Warhammer Fantasy. And it's very much inspired by 2000s era RTS games like Age of Empires. That's basically the time period of my life when I had the most energy. So I look back on it fondly. I'm a big fan of that style of RTS games and all of the game mechanics around it are kind of designed to hook in to that nostalgia. You've got tech trees, you've got stats that resemble Age of Empires. You have distinctive factions 
as well. There's no orcs or elves or dwarves in this one. Okay. Instead, you have some very interesting, very specific cultures. They almost feel historical. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, everyone has their own flavors they like. Um, Again, not being a fan of the whole movement trays, but then it not having really, I guess it's like fantasy, but it's like, again, a grounded kind of fantasy, sword and sandals fantasy, whatever you want to call that. So no weird races or anything like that. Okay. All right. You know, so I may, I'm not judging the game. Obviously I haven't played the game, never seen the game in person. I shouldn't be judging the game. Just let you guys know my taste and uh but smashed together in a really interesting way you've got hellenistic greeks bashing up against the xing chinese dynasty against the spanish conquistadors they're fantasy counterparts of course but aesthetically they really evoke those time periods yeah i mean they look cool the, the models look cool from what i from what i see in this video um I don't know. I'd, I'd have to see this one. It is super interesting to see it on a table. I played a demo game of it, and it was pretty fun. Uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. This. Oh, is 7 TV. This is a really interesting game. So, there are two levels. I'm going to cut her off right here because I. So, the whole 7 TV, I think they've got a bunch of box sets, and I've seen it, and I almost, almost purchased i think their fantasy version um but you know i don't really hear too many people talking about this game and um all of their games and i'm assuming they've got with all of these box sets i would think people would just be like chomping at the bits to get to them but again i mean um in my circle no one's really even heard of these uh 7 tv and when i look up videos for 7 tv I, I don't see a lot. I mean, I do see the videos they've posted, and there's a few others. Um, Cry Havoc, um, which is a really cool guy. He did something for Battle Space. But um, Cry Havoc Wargaming, I think he covered uh, 7 TV. I can't remember which one it was off the top of my head. But um, yeah, it's, it's just something I just don't, it's just not on a lot of people's radar for some reason to this game the very first is 7 tv this is an overarching rule set designed to explore genres mostly in 70s british television you've got your british cop drama your adventure stories your weird horror movies this specifically is a starter set for the pulp genre that's the second layer so this is the pulp starter set and the entire conception of this game is that you are in fact the director of a show and so the game rules are designed around making a very action-packed exciting game i'm really excited to actually play this i've never played a game of this and so guys i wonder if because how they've got it kind of the angle is kind of coming at you where you're like like she just said you're a director of a show i wonder if that's something that turns people off um i don't think i'd really think twice about that because I'm, when i'm playing the game i'm not necessarily thinking of how the game is referring to me and my role in, um, I guess, how I manage the table, you know? So I don't know, maybe that's, maybe it's because it's pulp and a lot of their games kind of still have that pulp feeling even when it's a different genre. Because I think I've seen like the apocalypse, the post-apocalypse kind of uh, video, uh, series or set. And it also still had that pulp vibe to it. Um, and they, even their fantasy still had a pulp vibe. So, I mean, I think that's just kind of their roots. And no matter what they do, it's, it's, they're still kind of attached to that, you know? So This before, but I did get bamboozled by the sweet talking uh, seller at the pulp 7 TV stand. What can I say? Crooked dice, they got me. And speaking of pulp, we got this bad boy. This is Lurkers from the Deep. Firstly, hmm. can we please have more miniature war games being sold inside VHS packs? I, I would really love that. So this is what I was talking about when it came to Pulp. Because it's part of 7TV, it means that there are lots and lots and lots of different oh, variants. Cool. This is a horror expansion. And this one is kind of like an Innsmouth sort of expansion. All about insane science, neurotic monsters, occult action. So it comes with an episode guide. Pretty big book, actually. And Interesting. A bunch of stock, so there's no miniatures in here but there oh, are no minis. cards and stats and things like that so miniature we agnostic maybe an actual episode of lurkers from the deep 
I bet you know what this is. This is mm. Kings of War. If you are excited for Warhammer Fantasy, I mean, why aren't you just playing Kings of War? I got to play my very first... Yet another game I wouldn't be interested in. Game of Kings of War at UKGE. I know it is a very much iconic game in the world, but I just, I've never played it before. So I got my very first game in. I got a game in of what they call the ambushed game. This is essentially the equivalent of a Warhammer 40k combat patrol style game, except, you know, they did it first. Not a lot of miniatures needed by Kings of War standards or by an army game standard. Very, very quick and easy to get to the table. The Kings of War miniatures are super affordable as well. Manti Games very graciously let me have a review copy of the Ogre's Ambush set, as well as my favorite, the Night Stalker set. Ogre's. Thinking about going solar? Before you do, see what others paid for three to 10 kilowatt systems. Or Ogre's, you can get them anywhere. But can you get the Night Stalkers? That looks pretty cool. Night Stalkers are basically nightmarish monsters from, you know, your nightmares. And uh, they look really interesting. I love the kind of Cthulhu-esque so element to them. Guys, also. I'm going to try to st not stop the video as much. Uh, I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. And but and I'm just going to talk over her while she's doing her thing. I would like to say that that would be a good way to get a lot of models. I mean, not necessarily for, I don't know, that's a lot of models. That's a good way to get a lot of models. I guess you could play it for uh, any other game you'd want to play it for or use it for, but. This is a super affordable game. To give you a little bit of an idea, each of these starter sets costs 28 pounds. So for the price of a single model from Games Workshop, you can get one of these boxes. Now you can't beat that. So if you are actually playing uh, one page rules. This would be a perfect uh, a model range, excuse me, to kind of get. Following the channel for a while now, we'll know all about this game. I've been desperately hunting for this. <laughs> oh, this must be. Ooh. There it is. Yes, this is. Alien, so the the aliens board game, excuse me, the aliens board game. Guys, I waited for this game. She's talking about it right now. I've been waiting. I had waited. I waited for this game for years, like two years solid, and the game finally came out. Made sure I got it. I got it the first day, maybe the first week that it was released. Probably the first day. Though. I think the first day I could get my hands on it. I actually went and got it. I picked it up from the hobby store. And as you know me. I mean, I want to support my friendly local hobby store but let's say the damn prices there are high i hate that they are high there ain't no discounts there at my hobby store but i picked it up from the hobby store i even have the expansion for it and guys i just never played it i only picked it up because i love the movie i put the models together and these are hard plastic miniatures you can use plastic glue on these i think so yeah the, the miniatures are hard the, the aliens are a pain in the ass to put together as far as their tails and stuff oh i hated it to trying some games of that and not only did i get the starter set i also got this the partisan resistance sale oh okay i've i've seen this before i've seen this before i just it did not dawn on me what this was when she was kind of pulling it out i was like i've seen this logo from somewhere the game the expansion adds a lot that's what uh that's what i was assured anyway that's why i picked it up so i'm really excited to try that game out i was a big fan of the original kill team uh, I love playing the sentries and getting gunned down by commandos. I don't know. I'm just a little bit of a masochist, I guess. We've come to the end with a product that is last, but certainly not least. It's also the heaviest part. Ooh, heavy's good. All, heavy's always good. Ta-da! This is Star Wars Shatterpoint. That's a big freaking box. Oh, my God. Jesus. That thing is huge. Okay, so this is big. love the artwork on this that is box really really big this is a very very hefty box and you've likely heard about this Shatterpoint has kind of exploded onto the scene it's just come out this so blackjack legacy was talking about Shatterpoint um on his monday live stream and that's something he's going to be playing I, um, I believe as well um and i made a comment I think I made a comment like later on, like after he posted it, like not while he was live or anything like that, but just basically saying, because from what I've heard is that the scale is like, like 35 mil. And I'm just like, dude, I do not want to dedicate more space 
to another scale. Now, if you know me, you know that I've got 20 mil and 28 mil is kind of like, you know, 20, 28 mil is everyone's bread and butter. But um, I was trying to do some a lot of 20 mil. I got a lot of 20 mil. I went down that rabbit hole deep and I got so much 20 mil stuff that now I'm just like, this is a little too much. And I've been trying to build more terrain, excuse me, build more terrain for the 20 mil stuff so I can actually get to using it because it's it's just a little too small for me to use some most of my 28 mil terrain so i did not want to get a set of 35 mil stuff and try to get terrain that's going to fit that because even though and this is where i was kind of coming back with blackjack legacy and his he replied to my comment he said that the scale's not too much different from a 30 or 28 mil but i just feel like 28 versus a 35 and they have a very like elongated look you know they're very like if you've seen any of those old like cg like um star wars cartoons like rebels bad bunch um and i can't think of the clone wars those are the three that at least popped to my head but if you've seen any of those they've kind of got this kind of like style where they're kind of like long especially more so with the Clone Wars stuff. I think Clone Wars was actually a animated series. I can't remember. Anyway, but they all had this like long kind of look, you know, long torso, long arms, long legs, blah, blah, blah. But basically in, in they're trying, they capture that with these sets of models. And I, I just don't think it's going to look right now. Obviously I don't know that 100%. So don't hold me to the fire on that. But Again, I, I just from what I know about scale and stuff like that, you know, your your doors and stuff and windows, you're going to be all off. I just I don't want to go down there. I don't want to do it. Monk, so it is a skirmish game from I mean, look how tall they look published by Osmode. And boy, what a game it is. OK, so what to talk about here? This is a kind of animated series, be a Star Wars game. So we need stories. We need stories to understand ourselves. We are the only. So it's not really based on the original trilogy at all, which is a little bit of a pity because I'm a big fan of the original trilogy. Now, now, guys, I, how do you feel about this? Like them just taking the Star Wars, changing the designs, of the models and just slapping an, uh, in another box and just say, hey, here's another game. Because I, I know this is Atomic Mass, but doesn't Fantasy Flight have like their their battle game? Um, I can't think of the name of it right now, but I mean, like, why couldn't we just use those models for this? I get it. They want to make more money. I understand. And the models look cool visually. They are visually are very appealing aesthetically. But I just, I'm out. If I was like deep into their other game um, financially, and then there's like, hey, here's some other, here's some more Star Wars models. We're just going to release the same characters, t slightly different aesthetic. And now if you want to play this game, you should buy these. Now, clearly, you can just use the models you already have. I've got a bunch of the old bendy plastic, the bendy like lightsaber models, the ones that from the bl blind boxes you would get back in the early 2000s or make, I guess, the 2010s, honestly. So if I were to try this game out, if the rules are free or at least you pay for just the rule book, and that looks like it comes with custom dice so never mind <laughs> all that talk for nothing there are probably going to be miniatures coming out i know there is a darth vader coming out for the game and there's some really interesting miniatures actually there's a padme miniature but like queen amidala padme so whenever she's like you know the queen I these miniatures look freaking beautiful so like if you don't have any other star wars stuff i mean this is Seems like a very good spot, it's a very good place to start. Running about the palace, being shot at by droids. I don't know. I, I guess that is apparently a hero unit in this game. It's very rare that you see anybody but Darth Maul come out of episode one looking good. This is a really interesting game. I'm probably actually going to review this on the channel. I want to talk about this at length. There's a lot of content in here. You get 16 miniatures. You get a bunch of terrain. Wow. Okay. And then you get a bunch of range tools, which they're not they're not new things. You you made those up. You you just made those, so I have to buy them. You also get a bunch of dice. Yeah, I don't like that. The whole guys, I know they've got to maximize their profits, but I mean, custom dice. Okay, we get it. But the custom like range rulers, 
I think, you know, GW did something with that with uh, Kill Team where it's like the circle square, whatever else it was. And I, I, just, I don't get it. I'm just like, dude, just let me get a tape measure or just give me like a measuring stick that's like a set distance. I guess that's what they're doing there. I've, if this is like that other game where it bends, I'm just like, that's just gimmicky. You can keep it. And you get a bunch of cards and things like that. So I'm interested in trying out this game. I, I will say this much. If I didn't get a review copy, I'm not sure whether or not I would have picked this up. It is a very expensive box set. Very expensive. So, yeah, I got... Oh, that's not good. <laughs> for, for a YouTuber to say that, you know, it's like, ah, this is expensive. I ain't buying this. I ain't buying it. I'm not buying it, no. But you can give it to me for free. You can give me that for free. You can, I'll take it then. But no, I ain't, ain't spending my money on it, so... Eesh. This has a review copy. I got this for free. So thanks to Asmodee for uh, for letting me have a review copy there. Some of the things that interest me most about this game are the actual mechanics. This looks to be like a very fun game. Wait. Did she just say Asmodee? Oh, I guess, yeah, Fantasy Flight is now Asmodee. I was just, just now, I totally lost it. I was like, wait a minute, Asmodee? But it's like, okay, Asmodee is Fantasy Flight. They're essentially Tom Atomic Mass games as well. They Asmodee owns them all, so... Okay, we're good. Very we're good. Skirmish game. I only got a couple of turns in for a demo game. However, there is like a kind of almost like a tech tree. When you make attacks, you follow these different trees and they do different amounts of damage depending on how many successes you got. There's just some really interesting stuff. It's alternating activations, but you're drawing from a deck of cards to see who actually gets activated, which is super curious. In the few rounds that I played, it was fun. It worked well. However, um, I'm very interested to see whether or not it works on an actual game basis. So yeah, yeah. probably gotta review this one on the channel it is it is yeah, yeah look we're gonna wait for that one to come out and a lot of people to run that through the ringer so we can find out all the flaws of the game because it it just sounds way too expensive more star wars models need new terrain i guess it comes with terrain it, it this set comes with terrain so if they're like producing their own terrain that you can buy but you still have to store it so there's still a headache big game and people actually seem interested in it so hey what are youtube war game content creators for anyway whilst at the asmodee stands i also got to try marvel crisis protocol which is a really big skirmish game one of the biggest war games in the world and uh yeah it just has not been has not been a game i've ever played sorry about so i've got a buddy who just recently um got into this game he's sold his entire um he sold his entire uh, collection of Age of Sigmar to kind of get up the get the starter sets and some figures for for this uh, Marvel game. And I, I don't know. I got to get back with him to see how he's liking it. It's he's playing it with his son. His son's really into Marvel and and gets the comic book superhero stuff. So that's just an incentive for him to kind of go in this direction and kind of step away from age of sigmar which you know more power to him for that that one and i finally got a game in and it was fine it was pretty good it was kind of fun being able to spend hero points in order to like throw cars at people and leap around and use your special abilities it was pretty neat and i think this about atomic mass games they're one of the few companies out there putting a very tight rule sets together yeah, that's always good yeah. putting them out there with miniatures price points kind of bother me a little bit but yeah expect to see more about star wars shatterpoint on the future I, i'm just going to assume their price points are where they are is because you know they got to keep their doors open and they've got to pay for that ip so you know Mar disney's got to get their money too so they're, they're going to try to maximize that as well. Got to maximize that return. And uh, I'm pretty sure they've got a, a large team or please, at least a substantial team working on these rules and stuff like that. And hopefully play testing everything because you do not want to charge a lot of money for your game. And people are unhappy with the results and, and the unplayability of a game that's broken. Everything. Well, guys that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it this is a long one um she's got some pretty good things pretty some pretty unique games some pretty interesting games and there it's all good you know it's all love this is a awesome hobby and there's so much out there for people to play so get outside of the warhammer box and try something new guys Thank you for joining me in this video. I hope you subscribed already. And if you haven't, please do hit the like button and I'll see you guys again.
tomorrow.